Russell Westbrook is still there. They trade for Patrick Beverly. Oh, boy. I'm pretty sure a lot of people, you know, had their eyebrows raised when they saw this trade happen. I mean, Patrick Beverly. Really? With Russell Westbrook? In today's video, we'll look at the rivalry that was and still is. But before that, we'll stay in the present moment. He's going to do everything the Lakers haven't received from Russell Westbrook. Don't say that to LeBron, though, because he still thinks Westbrook has some juice left in his tank. I mean, right here, there's this guy tweeting about how Westbrook disrespected so corny. And LeBron replying, saying, I can't wait for him to go off this season. And it's pretty interesting. It seems as though LeBron has not learned from his keep the same energy tweet. Beverly can shoot off the catch. He cuts to the rim. He moves without the ball. He plays his role on defense and always plays hard and brings energy. That's the anti Russell Westbrook. So that was Kevin O'Connor from the Ranger. Yeah, he's not a fan of Westbrook. And we'll get into that later, uh, particularly how I feel about him. These two have been mortal enemies when they've gone against each other throughout their NBA career. But before we get into the cream of the crop of this video, we gotta touch base on some of the takes that have come out recently. When you think about Patrick Beverly and you think about Russell Westbrook, I understand they have a history, but Rondo and Russell Westbrook had a history. Nice try, Perk. I see what you did there trying to fool me with that one. Rondo may have played with Westbrook that season, but he did not play for him during the full season. He went to Cleveland afterwards, okay? There's a reason for that. Patrick Beverly actually is going to bring out the best version of Russell Westbrook. Yeah, if he plays against him, I don't think it's going to work the same way if they're teammates. I mean, let's just, like, what? They actually could play together. And if Russell Westbrook has the right mindset, Patrick Beverly and Russell Westbrook actually could be the most dangerous defensive backcourt in the NBA. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. That, I, that was hard to watch. And I'm pretty sure that was hard for you guys to listen at home, okay? Look, there is optimism that Westbrook and Beverly could potentially work it together and be able to play together. And there's also optimism that Westbrook himself might play better this season. <laughs> I happen to believe he's going to have a, a tremendous season. There's no way in hell that Russell Westbrook is going to be as bad as he was last season. I promise you that. And there possibly may be signs on the horizon that this beef with Westbrook and Beverly might be over. It might be behind us. He's now buddy-buddy with Westbrook, but I'm not sure about that. Okay, we got to go back and look at these two guys and how they played out their careers. Westbrook with OKC Thunder. He was a very good player in 2012. I mean, we're, we all know how great of a player he was during that run where they made the finals. Kevin Durant and Westbrook the tandem that was James Harden was a six man but those two were their main guys okay the, some people were even saying that Westbrook was supposed to be the MVP of the team I mean even Skip Bayless was debating it the positions were only created so a novice could follow the game just because you're a power forward that doesn't make you physical just because you're a shooting guard that don't mean you can jack up threes that's what, just what were you position. Jalen what were you what were you did you what were you did you average one point Four yeah, points yeah, yeah, as a yeah, senior yeah. in high school? Yeah, I did. Okay, so yeah. all of that Pistol P stuff, Water Pistol P okay. Jr. Okay, we'll, we'll address that later. We're okay. going to. And Don't ignore that. Oh my, I remember this moment. Skip Bayless really looked like a dummy after that one. Talking about you here, we're talking about the modern day athlete. They can get a bit sensitive. There's a lot of stuff that they can't take. Them bringing in Stephen A, having a show the day after talking about the show previous. I mean, this is embarrassing, but the OKC Thunder, as I said, they were winning games. It's Marion Durant, pull up jumper, off the rim and oh! The first round of the playoffs was a breeze for them, even though I remember this series being particularly close each game. But it was a sweep, and this iconic moment happened too. Uh, Jonathan Sharks, real GM. Do you think Harden is a max player? Or would you rate him as a shooting guard in the NBA? I mean, how are you even supposed to answer that? Um, James Harden is a, is a great player for our team. Uh, he does a lot of great things for us, and um, he's going to continue to do that for us. No more questions for you, bro. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, back to me setting up the story now. The Thunder, man, they breeze for the playoffs right here. Westbrook with an iconic play. Yeah, I, I think some of you remember this one. And yeah, they went to the finals as well, but unfortunately lost to the Heat in five games. James Harden, Westbrook, KD, the last time you'd see this trio play in the game. And it would be interesting, obviously, LeBron's first championship. But, you know, Westbrook, man, and Kevin Durant and all those guys... This was their b biggest chance to win it all. Now, the following season would be an interesting one. Before we get to those moments, we have to talk about the other player in this rivalry, Patrick Beverly. I mean, he came in, and I'm telling you, the scouting report weren't too kind about his weaknesses, saying that he plays with a scores mentality and does not have the natural playmaking ability that a player at 6-1 must have. And isn't it funny to see that he was drafted in the second round by the Los Angeles Lakers? I was fortunate, man, to get drafted. I think 41 or 42 by the Lakers. Then uh, I was traded to the Heat. Full disclosure, Patrick Beverly would not suit up to play in 2009. Uh, yeah, he would have to wait a couple of years before starting to play his first game. I had a draft party at my grandma's house right on the block. You know, everybody was there from my old teachers to, you know, everybody old friends to everybody and it was one of the best times of my life in the meantime though he did play some games overseas in greece with milos till those shit yeah. with a good team and uh you know it helped me it helped me a lot it helped me uh understand what hard work really means to uh to to work extra you know, on and off the court you know to try to get my time you know i got lifetime friends there you know, I look up to Ted Dosage, I look up to Papa Lucas, uh, you know, Josh Shields is still good friends, you know, so uh, my experience in Greece has really, uh, you know, helped me get to this point. Now, he also played in Russia as well, and, you know, th these experiences would actually shape the way he would play today. Basketball, uh, played in Russia, made the transition easy for me to get here, uh, learn how to be a point guard, learn how to play the basketball game the right way, and I'm uh, fortunate to be able to and now we connect the two the Thunder lose their championship but guess what Patrick Beverly is now a Rocket James Harden joins the Rockets as well and it's an interesting team I'll say that much and obviously there were some scary moments during that season for the Thunder Kevin Durant uh, you know looking like he got hurt pretty bad there but you know close call nonetheless and also when it comes to KD I mean just what was he looking at right here bro what Bro, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> oh, wow, completely forgot about this meme here. Russ, did you guys lose this game or did the Jazz win this one? That dude really asked that and thought it was a, it was a pretty legit question to ask. Not stupid at all. Bro, I'm out, man. That nigga's tripping. And now the first sparks of this rivalry begin. <laughs> Lock the shot. He used to go to the front of the rim, pick up that garbage. I still remember this play vividly. It was a pretty dirty play. I gotta admit, Peverly, I mean, he, that was very uncalled for. And you see it, the side swipe by Beverly. And you guys have to understand how big of a deal this was at the time. Westbrook, this was the first time he would miss a game during the NBA season. And this would be the playoffs. And just in case you guys don't believe me, here are the numbers. Uh, 2011 season, there was a shortened season of 66 games. Now. In the high school and college, apparently Westbrook also never missed a game then. And funny enough, I got this receipt right here where back then, Beverly thought Westbrook was the toughest guy he guarded. Now, the playoffs was over and Westbrook, well. Making his season debut, Russell Westbrook. The team announced today that Russell's gone through every step of his recovery. Thank goodness. Now, with Patrick Beverly, he was also getting to some skirmishes with guys like DeMarcus Cousins. I mean, this was a weird moment. Also, when they played each other the next season, I mean, you could see here, they were fighting for that ball, and Beverly was really just up on Westbrook's nose, and Westbrook did not like it so much. And Westbrook, well, it would get worse for him, I mean. And Scott Brooks wants to call a timeout, and Beverly again, and Westbrook. So let me get this straight. You already made this guy have to miss his first games ever in his career, and now you're just trying to cause a ruckus with him calling a timeout. I mean, you obviously knew he was about to do that. And it's like, bro, Beverly was clearly just irritating him. Uh, it just tried to egg him on. Now, I will say, it's not like Beverly was a complete no-show in these games. I mean, he would also have some highlights. Set to run here in the second quarter. Beverly throws it down. Come 
coast to coast and finishes with a slam. Well, we all know he's no Westbrook, right? He's not a star in any shape or form. But where his strength lies is in his tenacity, his toughness on defense. Talking about the chip on his shoulder, he says, I think that some people call it a chip. Mine was more like a mountain. That way was defense. They really allowed you to play overseas. They let you play for everything, holding, grabbing, illegal screens, tough hand checking, and tough defense. Playing overseas for five years, that's all I knew. When I go to the Rockets, I brought the same mindset. And it's quite telling how one NBA scout would say it. He said he plays like it's his last game, as if he's trying to survive. That drive in Beverly, I mean, he would go on to say here, basketball players want to be comfortable. They want to be lackadaisical. They want to make the right passes and take the right shots. And Beverly, he was one of those guys that would not let you do such thing. You could also see that same drive in Westbrook. I mean, coming into the playoffs, finally, he's healthy now. And he says, for anybody who gets hurt, you just come back with a bigger shovel. You want to compete, come back better and compete at the level before you got hurt. It's made me even more meaner, he says, but that's normal for me. And more on Beverly, because I really do find his play type interesting. He says here, no, when you play me, I'm going to get right up in your grill and let you know it's going to be a long day. It's going to be physical. It's going to be something you don't like. It's going to be hell. People compared him to a gnat and a mosquito, a pit bull and a Doberman pincher, and that's just by family and friends. I mean, this guy probably got compared to way worse things. And, you know, they say here he's obnoxious. Chandler Parsons says that's why we love him so much. I mean, this guy, Daryl Moore even says this is a position where a lot of Western Conference teams would have an all-star, but no, they picked Beverly because of just how important just how important of a role he plays on that defensive end. He's just a he's a dog. Take it away. Now what in the world just happened there? Okay, let let's just replay that because yeah, that, that was a nice block right there. That was really good defense. And back on the OKC Thunder side, they were in the playoffs winning pivotal games and Unfortunately, it would be the same story all over again, except they would not even make it close to the conference finals. This was not the same OKC team. Brooks shaken up on the play. He tried to rush in after missing the free throw or attempting to miss it. You have one season Westbrook misses games in the playoffs. Another season KD misses games with a foot injury. Now Westbrook here, a close call. His face was bumped into by a teammate, but he did get All-Star MVP. He did win the scoring title in 2015. It was a great year for Westbrook. And for Beverly, he was still doing some antics. I think he was trying to foul. He felt they had numbers. And Honestly, at this point, I could not blame you for not liking this guy. That's, that's just a lot of what you see from him. Like, he just does not seem to want to give you any space. And sometimes he would go as far as to push you out of the way and just make, make it known that He's there, right? His presence is there. Now, we have to skip forward to the 2016-2017 season because not much happened after that in terms of the rivalry. KD's now a warrior, so Westbrook's now the leader of the team. And right here is where things really begin to spice up. Good defense by Pat, keeping Westbrook in front of him. He'll raise up for a three. Air ball! Good defense from Beverly. Uh, obviously, Westbrook... He could have shot a better shot, but look, there was like 10 seconds left. I can't blame him, except the commentators, though. Westbrook launching and missing everything. Now, these days, the Rockets were the better team, especially with KD now being a warrior. Uh, Beverly actually being a factor since returning from his injury. And yeah, he missed the first 11 games of the season with a left knee irritation. And also, uh, boy, oh boy, just look at this statement from Beverly this year I'm the best defender in the league I mean that's the confidence that you have to have to be a guy like Beverly I mean your role in this league essentially is to be an irritant all right that's that's basically what it is but he comes in and says I'm the best guard in the league defensively man hands down you can ask any team any coach any player they will tell you the truth this year I'm the best defender in the league and I want you guys to peep at this tweet here where Beverly has this you know, interesting exchange with a reporter. So I'll go on and read these excerpts. So the reporter says, how do you look at these last two losses? Close losses. Beverly says, what do you mean? And the reporter drops back. Do you look at them well? Do you take good things away from them? How do you look at them? I'm asking you. How do you look at them? I'm asking you now. I thought you guys competed well. 
There you go, that's your answer then, brother. It ain't chess, it's checkers, man. Whatever you see is the way the game's going. Y'all fans of basketball, y'all see how the game's going. Now, Westbrook, he was having an MVP season. Shannon Sharp, Russell Westbrook is having the single greatest regular season in history. The Rockets are built to win now. The Thunder simply have the MVP. Who would win out in this clash of titans? Cut open in the first half. Back in there, battling for the board. Steven Adams just building up a wall and just putting Beverly through it, man. I'm telling you, that was hard to watch. And man, man it, 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 he's going to feel that tomorrow. But interestingly enough, the game would actually be in Beverly's favor. He would actually convert on two free pointers right after that collision. Oh boy, he was excited. Every chamber is filled. Patrick Beverly checking it out. And after the game, you would think, okay, Beverly is probably going to complain about it. He's going to talk about how horrible of a screen it was. Nope, quite the opposite. He said, nah, it was a legal screen. Good screen, not worried about that, man. We're just trying to focus on doing the right things. I've been hit with many screens before. So on to the next play. And to his standards, Westbrook had a poor game with 22 points, 7 assists, just 6 of 23 shooting, 9 turnovers. Beverly, on the other hand, had 21 points, a career high in the playoffs, with great shooting, 10 rebounds. Yeah, he was basically outplaying Westbrook. James Harden went as far as to say that's the reason we're in the position we're in. He brings it every game, talking about Beverly. Whether his shot is falling or not, he brings that intensity, that resolve. He was just pat tonight. And in game four, you would see another collision here with Westbrook and Pat trying to get the ball here. Obviously, both of them going back and forth, just exchanging words. Of course, this rivalry would get even uglier as the years went by. But right here in 2017, a lot of words were exchanged in the press conferences. Uh, Russell, things got a little contentious between you and, and uh, Patrick Beverly. Can you talk about you know kind of what happened there? Oh, yeah, he was talking about he was first team all defense, but I, 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 I didn't know what the hell he was talking about because I had 42 at the time um, the series you know I don't know what he talking about maybe he was dreaming of some shit I don't know sorry excuse my cuss word but I don't know what he was talking about but I guess he, he wanted to be first team all defense or something maybe he was dreaming about it I don't know and Beverly's side of this story it's uh, yeah, it's pretty much what you expect but now it shocked me because he said he looked up and said no can guard and you have, I got 40 points I'm like that's nice he took 34 shots to get it <laughs> I mean, no, I'm not trying to. I'm not out there trying to bash anybody, but I mean, you know, men lie, women lie, but the numbers don't collectively as a unit. So as I said earlier, Westbrook was the MVP that season, the best player with triple doubles damn near every game, and Pat Bev. He was now reunited with his former teammate, Till Dosic, in the Clippers land. Now he's in L.A. Ooh, that's going to be interesting. He's a competitor. He's the ultimate competitor. I don't think he's dirty at all. This was a very dangerous play. Everybody here it was a dangerous is lucky play. that Russell did not get hurt on that play. Oh, boy, 2018. This a repeat of what we've seen in the past, I guess. Westbrook this time playing against the Clippers, where Beverly would be featured guarding him and Westbrook would do easy work of him even rocking the baby I mean this guy did it twice as well like he would not stop with that celebration and guess what Beverly did he did the same thing baby he said Brock a bye Who? Westbrook trying to keep it alive so a repeat of what we see in 2013 uh, this this guy just does not stop. Look, he was going for the ball. I get it. I get it. This is not how you do it, man. This is an NFL play right here. This is not something you do in the NBA game. I mean, look, man. I've mostly been on Westbrook's side when it came to these issues because, well, he's not in the wrong here, man. It's just simple as that. Beverly should not be playing this way. Defensively, there's a way to play to where you don't hurt a guy like that. And I just think it was out of line. In terms of the actual... Dive, this was a worse dive. You think so? Westbrook having a mature response to all this though. Nice to see. So the history between you and Patrick, what did you think about what happened tonight? I have no comment on it. I just know that we won. Looks like Westbrook listened to some Rusty Buckets because uh, he stopped being professional here and started saying some things. Russ, can you tell us um, your new rock the baby? I assume you're rocking a baby? Is yeah, you got little kids. You gotta give them little babies. <laughs> Put them to sleep. You got little kids on you. Okay. That's what happens. The little guards. You gotta rock on it. What'd you 
Now, Beverly, I'm pretty sure he heard some of this. He said in response, I went for the loose ball. What do you think happened? Somebody walked to our bench doing all the cap and stuff. I don't know what that is. Walked to our bench doing this and all that and things were kind of haywire from there. Uh, two competitors, no one's going to back down. No one did. Two technicals continue playing. Referring back to 2014, he said, it was seven years ago. Bro, let it go. Now, Pat Beverly, he was scrappy as always. Look at how he's defending LeBron. Look at how he's just trying to get an inch over LeBron, even though he's way shorter than him. It's obvious. LeBron was getting way too irritated because obviously this team, the Lakers team back then, wasn't as good. And Skip Billis has some things to if, say. If I could put Patrick Beverly's motor in LeBron James, then I would have the next Michael Jordan. But I can't. As per tradition, skip, skip. And last night, I couldn't. And so last night in the fourth quarter, it just looked like LeBron was mailing it in. Like he ran out of gas. He ran out of fight. Even in the first quarter, he wouldn't fight back against Patrick Beverly. He's just, just kind of like standing up over him, like, leave me alone, right? I thought you would jumpstart him. I thought this could be a 60 point night. We're talking about 40. This is the one where LeBron, in his heyday, he would say, okay, you got it, pal. Right between your eyes. Give me the damn ball and get out of my way. He could have fouled out little 6 1 Patrick Beverly by halftime. Could have fouled him out because I don't care how much help is going to come. If you get the ball in the post and you wheel on him, good things are going to happen because you're going to march to the free throw line. I don't care if you make 65%, you're still going to shoot a whole bunch of free throws, right? It's disrespectful. And LeBron should look at it. Now, Pat Beverly saw the tweet where this video came from. He said, look, I was drafted by the Lakers and then traded to the Heat. So, yeah, I was drafted by them. Okay. Uh, Russell Westbrook, are you, right. guys, you guys good? What's he thinking about right now? What's he waiting for to respond to this? I don't know. You got to ask him. Now, they would go further into this conversation where he would say some things quite interesting. I don't know. For some reason, he, 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 he thought, you know, six, seven years ago, I tried to hurt him. And, you know, of course, that wasn't the case. But, you know, um, as a basketball player, you know, I'm not going to apologize for it. So, uh, I don't know, you got to ask him. And Pat Bev, man, you can't really fault him. He's just trying to do what he does in the court, and in the playoffs, he was an interchange against KD. I mean, you can see here, just exchanging words. I mean, he does this to anybody that he deems fit to do this against. I mean, wow. Barks at him, Durant. They're both out. They've both been just thrown out of the game. And what's interesting is Pat Bev, after that playoffs, he was offered some very good money, but declined. Who offered you more money, and how much more money? Three years 50 from sack. Interesting. Yeah. And you just were like, I got to stay where I am. Got to. No disrespect, and I appreciate Sack, of course, but, uh, you know, like, you know, all good money is good money. So Now both guys will be shaken by this trade right here, blockbuster as it is. Paul George to the Clippers now, and that means Pat Bev now has Kawhi and Paul George as teammates. They were willing in Oklahoma City, if there was a pathway, to do a Paul George and Russell Westbrook deal to Toronto, but that was not a deal that Toronto was going to do. Toronto did not want to give up Pascal Siakam. Oh, thank you, Bobby and Masai. Oh, you guys are so great. He is all NBA for a reason. Now, of course, the Clippers and the Lakers, they were the talk of the town, and especially in LA, because they were set, slated to be the best teams in the West. And on the other side, you have Westbrook now being a rocket. Sam Presti going full rebuild. And Harden and Westbrook finally teammates playing Kawhi. James Harden was cooking. You might want to guard him. Now, of course, in this game, there were a lot of interesting events. Capella being hurt, unfortunately for him. Not set to return. Harden, though, he went off for 47 points in this game. And it's quite interesting seeing how Doc Rivers was being told to get ejected by his own son. And the Rockets were able to beat the Clippers. Westbrook has some things to say. Pat Beverly's obviously a pretty well-known pain in the butt. How do you think, uh, what do you think of his matchup with James tonight and kind of the way James dealt with his tactics. You talking about James, what, 44, 47? 47. Uh, Pat Bev tricked y'all, man, like he played defense. He didn't guard nobody, man, just running around doing nothing. Now, today we see this as one of the funniest lines said in the press conference, but Westbrook, a lot of people were pushing back because James Harden only made one of his seven shots when defended by Beverly and for full context, here is more of the quote where Westbrook goes on to praise Beverly and his grit and toughness on defense. You think all the getting up and down his chest, 94 feet, all that. It's good, you know, play hard. Playing hard is a part of the game, man. I don't, for people like me, I play hard every night um, as well as he does. Um, and that's a part of the game. He play hard. That's it. There's no, nothing else to it. He play hard. That's good, but doesn't make great decision sometimes he does a good job defensively but tonight james took advantage of him he got what he wanted 10 days later harden would hit beverly with this iconic play right here 
under two to play. Harden step back, puts up the three, got hit, shots good, and one, James Harden. Ten seconds left, Rockets down one, Westbrook gets the ball, let's see. Westbrook for three, won't go, rebound George, gets away, and then they finally foul him with 1.2 remaining. You can see at the bottom here, Beverly, you know, mimicking Westbrook's form as he's mocking his missed shot. Both are exchanging words. Well, it wasn't just Westbrook getting rowdy in LA. I mean, you could see it his brother too. His brother had to be escorted out of the arena after he had a back and forth with Clippers forward Montrez Harrell. I can't lie to you. I was pretty sick watching this Christmas game, but man, was I enjoying every last second here. Remaining. James, step back, knocked out of his hands, deflected out of bounds. And again, in this video, we've seen Westbrook making strides to becoming an MVP level player. Beverly here, He's not done much of that. I mean, he's had zero points in the game against the Nuggets, uh, zero points against the Sixers, four assists and four rebounds, however. But he does it in different ways every time, right? They say, I just try to show different ways. You have players in this league that can score. That's good. That's fair. What else can you do to impact the game of winning? Every kid is not going to be seven feet. Every kid is not going to be Steph Curry, Greek Freak, or James Harden or Russell Westbrook. The average kid looks like me, my height, my size. How else can you impact winning? And Beverly, you could see it here, man. Even in this decade, he's chippy as ever. Oh, that's brutal. <laughs> well, that's a flavoring five. Context, uh, they were being sarcastic when they were saying this. They were not being serious at all. And uh, now we got to get into the offseason 2021 where Westbrook uh, from a wizard. Now he is a Laker. And yes, he is very happy about this. Now he gets to play in his hometown. And the hype was real. A lot of people were saying Westbrook was going to put this Lakers team over the edge for a championship. And boy, Patrick Beverly was even slated to become a Laker, but that didn't happen. Just like their title chances, yeah, things didn't look good for the Lakers, especially not for Westbrook. Where does all of this leave Russell Westbrook? But a damaged legacy. <sighs> That sigh in itself said it all, man. The amount of teammates Westbrook has had over the years that were so c great, and he never was able to capitalize on any of those teams. Now, Westbrook, he was trying his best to be as comforting as possible. You know, Beverly, guys like him, they were going to take these opportunities and run with it, man, calling him the real magician who tricked everybody. How much have you, have you held on to that? I call it perfect timing, divine timing. Now we'll get back into this interview later on in this video uh, just to let you know that because now the Timberwolves with Beverly, they were set to humiliate Westbrook. And watch it on TV. And then how about Pat Pat not get the ball free again? This was him just calling Westbrook trash and just sniffing and holding his nose. I mean, you could see it here. He was having the time of his life. And right here, this play, I mean, this is just sad. Rush from the corner. Get a timeout. Much like the Lakers title chances absolutely destroyed. Yeah, this team was very bad. And obviously Westbrook, he had to respond to this trash talking. And obviously the Timberwolves seem to be kind of giving you guys a lot of trash talk tonight. I mean, how, how do you kind of handle that? And is it, does it seem particularly notable tonight compared to other games? Um, I honestly don't pay no mind to it. Maybe the other guys are, they, didn't, they weren't talking to me. Um, so they were talking to individual guys particularly, but the trash talking doesn't bother me none. Nobody over there has done anything <laughs> that in this league that, you know, make me put my eyes up. Like, oh, they're talking mess. Let me respond. No. Now, don't get me wrong. Beverly was uh, doing his dirty stuff sometimes. You, you would see him doing some antics. But I I'm not really here to bash him as much as I am here to bash Westbrook. This was really where the downfall was just, you know, torpedoing downwards, man. Bristol, I hear that now you guys are actually the 11th seed, <clears throat> so you're out of the playing game. What changes going forward? Nothing, man. Nothing. And why is that? Because it doesn't. What does it change? We still got games to play. Other teams still got games to play. 
we still got to play teams that's above us in the play-in. Don't really change much. Now I get the reporters being a bit too extra, but come on, Westbrook, man. You got to know better, man. What do you think should change? Winning. Okay, that's obvious. What do you think should change? Yeah, he left off and he did not want to talk further, but he did end up talking further because the reporter insisted so. <laughs> no, really, man. Okay, okay. respect that. Okay. You got that? You got that? No. You got no. it? No, we respect. We can. We, 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 we that? It's good. <laughs> we can. You got that? <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, gotta make sure I record that. As of now, we're well aware of Beverly being a Laker. Anything could change at this point, but it's interesting looking back at some of the things he said could fix the Lakers. If, if Westbrook still is on the team, what do the Lakers need in order to get the best out of him? Another playmaker. Another playmaker. That's easy. Uh, obviously, LeBron James and, 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 and Russell Westbrook are going to have the ball a lot. But a guy that can play off the catch, a guy that can shoot the three very well, a guy that can bring up the ball also to take, to take some pressure off of him. Man, you put Anthony Davis at the five, he ain't going to last the whole season. That's just the honest truth. You got to address that five position. Uh, do we have a popping five? Do we have a facilitating five? Do I have a rolling five? Do they have a rim protecting five? He can't take that beating all year, not from the five. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Surround them with a little bit more shooting. And, and you take their team, you got to get rid of all them dudes. Can't none of, ain't nobody on their team shoot. You address those issues with a little bit of shooting around them, I, I, it, I don't think it's a hard fix. But the reason why I doubt these two are now buddy buddies all of a sudden is because Beverly said it openly. Westbrook actively damaged the perception of him and his career. You know, people looked at me differently. People around the NBA, yeah. coaches, players, like, after that, people were just taking the ball, just going at me. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, all because of what one person said. He damaged my career. Like, people, uh, coaching staffs and players, fans, they looked at me way different. They looked at me like, you know what? He don't play defense. He just yells and run around. Well, okay, woo, and held on to that, and held on to that. And some people still do. I'm more inclined to believe that after all these years, Beverly went up to Westbrook, they probably had contact with each other, and he said to him, how does it feel to be on the B side and me being now on the A side? There's no fun when rabbit got to go now. Now let's shift gears and talk about Westbrook a little bit, because Stephen A and Kendrick Perkins, well, they had themselves some pretty bad things to say about Brody. This is only about your game. You have not been a good shooter. And a person who has not been a good shooter doesn't work with Patrick Beverly. Patrick Beverly mm. ain't trying to come off the bench. Patrick Beverly is mm. trying to be that professional Hall of Fame past that's in the starting lineup, setting a tone, getting in people's face, holding them accountable, all of those things. You know Russell Westbrook don't have the temperament to put up with that. Come on, y'all. You know, that ain't who he what, what? is. It does not matter what Westbrook thinks. It only matters how the league perceives him now. But Steve, Stephen A, he don't have a choice. And it's not just for the Lakers. We're talking about for the rest of his career. This really is a showcase of how trash talking, you know, can go horribly wrong for somebody like Russell Westbrook. If he can't prove this season that he could take a lesser role, what are they saying he's going to be next year, Stephen A? They saying he possibly could actually be without a job. And really, I need to go into more depth when talking about this. And you can check out this video where I talk about Westbrook, how he needs to change. He has no choice at this point. Because as Kedrick Perkins said, it's either now or never. Okay, never being your career might be over by then. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Have a great one. Bye-bye.